welcome. Today we were going to talk about some of the large Viking axe heads and how they compare in weight and what they were used for, how they were used in that period of time. This is a little bit in the later Viking period, so we're talking Stamford Bridge, Battle of Hastings, uh, the Danish armies tromping across Central Europe, all of those areas will have seen this axe in action. Uh, we're going to start with our new reinforced edged Danish axe. This is coming in at about three and a half, three point six 3.6 pounds or so. Uh, it's a beefy piece. You have a long 56 inch weapon, so it, it handles pretty well. You can get diff the difference between your hands to really use the physics of the actions to work well for you. But it does feel quite a bit lighter than our regular Danish axe, which is just maybe uh, less than half a pound lighter. Uh, this axe has a very thin cutting edge on it compared to the reinforce on the ends of the other one but it is designed as a very much of an effective weapon. Uh, its advantage is going to be speed. It's going to be able to strike quicker. You can reach further without it pulling you off your balance. Uh, again, you're using the distance between your hands in the physics of the weapon, but it creates a weapon that is very quick in the hands and is gonna have a devastating strike. Uh, this is going to be very effective at cutting where the beefier edge of that will have a little less in, uh, ability to slice through something, but will uh, take the additional weight and produce a bigger impact in a sense without striking harder or striking with the same amount of force. And we compare those to our Irish axe, and you can see these are all about the same uh, length. So they're all about 56 inches long, but here we have a lighter haft and a very light head. The head's quite a bit smaller. It runs maybe uh, six and three quarters or so on the cutting edge, only about six and a half from the front to the back. Now there were many type M's and type L Dane axes that would be about this size as well. So these are larger examples of that type of ax. Uh, we pick a larger example because one, it's always easier to remove a little than to add a little on. And today the modern customer really gravitates towards what's the largest end of the historic envelope when they're purchasing a weapon. Now, the reason we have these lighter axes is really a, uh, an advantage in speed, fighting-wise, but also economic. You can produce more of these than you can those with the same amount of steel. And uh, when you look at something like this, where we're seeing it used in the Irish context, and you probably have warriors that are less encumbered by heavy armor that are maybe doing more cattle raiding and those kind of styles of warfare, um, not any kind of form battle kind of situations. This is gonna be much more uh, advantageous to running across the uh, heath of uh, Ireland without getting hung up or tiring you out from carrying it all day. Uh, these are incredibly quick little weapons. It's, it's amazing. They run about 2.4 pounds. So they're about the same as a single-handed sword in some cases. But again, your reach with 56 inches, if we can get, keep it all in the picture, is suddenly quite a bit longer. And you can see that my hands can easily manipulate this weapon with a greater reach than having the heavier edge sword, where if I have my hands that close together, that front is starting to really kind of pull down and be uh, ahead of my hands or behind my hands as I'm fighting, depending on where my hands are. So, you know, I have to have my hands further apart to get the same feel of the weapon and the actions of the fight. Now, if I'm a Hauerskarl, heavy mail armor, helmet, that kind of thing, something like this is exactly probably what I'm gonna pick because I'm gonna be up against those types of weapons on the other side. The result is you want something that's gonna land with a devastating impact as opposed to being easier to carry and maybe something that was going to be more in a hand-to-hand -hand combat situation uh, every day as opposed to formed lines of battle, things like that. So that's one of the reasons why you see such a wide variation in the weights of these heads. Uh, historically, they probably run from 
just over two pounds to I know some that are over four pounds. So uh, we haven't gotten that heavy with any of these because that just, it gets very difficult to maneuver them. And uh, you know, most people don't want them. Uh, but something like this, uh, it's probably going to be in that upper end of uh, combat effectiveness for weight uh, with that reinforced edge. And that is why you see these variations of the weights and the sizes. So there are many type M uh, axes from the period that are going to have, uh, you know, six, seven, four inch uh, types of edges as opposed to something like this that's almost 11. So uh, when you look at these axes, pick the one that works for you best or that fits your persona and uh, they will be a very effective and efficient weapons for you and we hope they serve you long and well.